G'day everyone, Steel Horse here. I'm on Griffin and uh, I just wanted to take a, a few minutes to do a bit of an introduction to course play. This video is really aimed at uh, newcomers to course play or people that are a bit, uh, feel a bit confronted by all of the, the depth of uh, function that's in it. Uh, and it's really intended to sort of get you off uh, to a fast start. Uh, now, the reason I've chosen Griffin is that if we have a look at the map here, there's this really big uh, custom meadow, uh, or it's just a meadow area with a, a lake in the middle. And what I thought it would be useful to do uh, is just illustrate how easy it is to use course play to get us up and going with this task as simple as mowing this meadow. Now, the first thing um, we need to learn, we need a mower. So we have uh, our trusty John Deere over here. And if you think about course play, it's just a set of instructions to do a particular job in a particular area. And in this, partic in this specific case, um, the area where we want to work is in part of this meadow. Now, generally on a map, there's fields defined. And so course play is quite happy to work with defined fields. And the, the step I'm about to show you isn't necessarily required. But in an area where there's no defined field, you can still get yourself going with course play. And for those of you with keen vision will have noticed I'm in the AI menu or the worker menu and I'm not in a vehicle at the moment. So an option that appears because I've got the course play mod loaded, I downloaded it from the mod hub and activated it. I now get an option to draw a custom field. Uh, and if you haven't seen that before, you can select that option it comes up at the heading at the top and says draw custom field lines with a right click. And so I can pick an area here in my meadow and I can pick it and I find it easier to start in the corner. And so, well, I actually want to create my own custom field, right click to create a corner, right click to draw it a bit further. I could go up and draw in practice with the right click for each any shape that I like to create my field. Now when I'm done, I've got a pretty good outline. I can tell course play that I want to save that as a custom field. It'll give it a name. So I'll just say yes. And so now I've got a custom field defined. If I click on it, I click on the name, it also will tell me what the area is, which I find kind of handy. Um, I can, and we won't do it at the minute, but I can also go and edit that custom field. So that's one way very quickly to create a field that course play will recognize. The other way is to use our vehicle because sometimes, and if you look at this field, for example, well, in fact, let's come back to the map. That might be the easiest way to do it. it whilst you've drawn it out, you're really reliant on how accurate this mini map is. And generally speaking, they're not bad approximations, but they're not really uh, reliable enough to be drawing field boundaries, unless you're absolutely certain. Um, it, there's a few risks. So for instance, we know there's a lake in the middle, but that's not the outline of the lake. I also know, uh, or it's a pond really. Uh, I also know there's a tree sitting out in the field around here and that there are trees and bushes along here. And that if I was to follow this edge, the road is not exactly where it appears in the minimap here. So in that circumstance, the other way to create a field is to go to the vehicle that we want to use uh, and line it up at somewhere to start the edge. 
and so well okay we want to run an edge say down here now if I then uh, hit the delete key on my keyboard it brings me up a mini map um, a mini HUD for course play and at the moment it shows me the vehicle that I'm in but not a lot of other information if I click on the red dot I'm telling it that I want to record uh, a course uh, and in specifically what I want to use this course for is to define a field so it's given me a starting point if I drive forward I can now drive around the outline of my field so keeping in mind this is going to be the edge of my field so I might want to put a corner in here and go straight across towards the little pond put a bit of an angled section in down to here we won't worry about getting too precise today I think you get the idea we'll go down to the near the fence along the road I don't, and it's going to keep giving me waypoints that define to course play the boundary of this field and so this is just a a different version of what I did with the point and click. So I finish off my field here. All right, that's close enough. And now with my mouse, and I, I've disconnected my mouse by clicking the middle mouse button, uh, I can now left click and turn it off. And again, it'll say, oh, do you want to save that as a, a, a custom field? Which I do. And so now, if I get back into the menu, we'll see back on our mini-map, we've now got a second field has appeared. And if I click on the, the name in the centre, it again tells me the area, and I could go ahead and edit it. And if you wanted to edit the field, you would click... Uh, I can't be in a vehicle to edit the field, I suspect. So if I wanted to edit the field, I would click on the field. I can give it a different name if I'd like. And if I edit it, it'll bring up the waypoints that make up the edge of the field. And I've got a couple of simple commands. I can use my mouse button to move by selecting the move icon putting the dot under the waypoint and you can see now I can move so if I want that edge to line up with that edge there I can do it like so I could add a point if I needed to but in this particular case I'm pretty happy that that defines my field on the advanced side same idea but I can do multiples so so there we go, that's editing. So now that I've got my course defined, I can now use course play because as far as course play is concerned, it now knows about these new fields. I can use course play to help me work these fields. So in the case of the, the first one we did, it was a little more complicated. Let's stick with the easy one. So what I want to do now is I'm in my worker menu. I want to create a job. And in terms of the type of job, field work would give me a regular worker. Course play field worker, uh, course play field work allows me to set up a course play course. So down in this menu here, the field position is the field that I want to be working. So I click that in the field. And target position is where I want to put my vehicle. And now that they're nominated, I want it to start at the first waypoint of the course, but there isn't a course currently. So I need to open the course generator, which I can do by clicking 
down at the bottom with the left mouse button and this will bring up the course settings um, for the vehicle that I'm in. Now in this particular case, uh, the work width should default most of the time to the correct width, but it's worth checking. 13.4 is the cut ahead on this mower. There's only one vehicle going to be working the course. I'd like it to cut two headlands and I want it to start on the headland. I want the corners of the headland to be smooth. They could be sharp or rounded, but in this case, smooth will do fine. I'd like it to go around the headlands in a clockwise direction. I tend to go with 5%. The amount of overlap just determines, um, it can sometimes miss a little bit on the corners depending on the turning circle of the, the vehicle that you're using and how the implement is set up. Uh, I find 5% is fine and if I've missed too much, I can go and fix it afterwards. Field center is how do you want it to deal with the field center? Up and down defaults to north south, uh, but it'll choose the best road direction uh, that it anticipates, unless you specify you'd like it to follow the longest edge uh, or to specify a specific angle for your rows. I tend to leave it to automatic and see what it comes up with. The next settings we don't need to worry about uh, for today's exercise. Um, there's no island in this field, so we've got nothing that we need to bypass. Uh, and the field margin's just a, like a, an offset to move the boundary either in a little bit or out a little bit. And you might do that sometimes if you've got rocks or something around the, or um, holes in the edge of your field that vehicles can get caught on or trees. So once those course generator settings are to your satisfaction, you can hit generate a course and you'll see on a simple field it should come up pretty quickly and those lines are the course. Now in this particular case we don't need to change it. If we wanted to we could go back in and change the row direction um, if we weren't happy and play with these settings and ask it to generate another course. But on this occasion I think we're pretty happy with that course. So we could just hit start, but if this is something you want to do a lot, uh, so this field you're going to keep for a long time and you expect to have to work it um, several times. So if it's a grass cutting field, for example, you, you might intend to mow it every few months. Uh, similarly, if you wanted to run a um, another implement like a a tether across after you've mowed it, uh, then you might want to use the same course. And to do that, there's a menu over here uh, which allows you to save uh, courses. And in this particular case, I've set up a folder just by creating new folder and I could save this course in my meadow folder. I'm going to activate it because it'll then ask me a name. So the name of this course is Single Mower uh, CP2. Okay. So it's now created a Single Mower CP2. So now when we come out to our uh, menu, you'll see in the course play HUD that our course has a name and we're set to go. Um, it'll get default to the nearest waypoint on this particular in occasion. We want it to go to the first waypoint. So if you just click on that, it'll find that. And we can then the, go to the right triangle up there and click start. And all being well, our worker here should go and find the starting point of the course and commence. It might take a second for course play to figure out where the commencement point on this course is. It's just over here.
There you go, it's just searching for the beginning. It's activated the tool. He's going to find the starting position on the field for the course. And away he goes. And it really is as easy as that. Now, sometimes uh, it, it, there can be a little bit of a pause while uh, the worker finds the start point for the course. Um, if we click out, hit our delete key again to turn our HUD on. Uh, if we want to here, we can turn the waypoints on and off. Uh, we don't want to click any of these other set of, the green triangle will start and stop the course so we can start we don't want to go back to the first waypoint we want to be the nearest whoops let's try again start from the nearest waypoint and it'll pick up where it left off um, the other information that you've got here this is telling you in the name of the course that it it's running so this is the vehicle this is the course that it's running and it's now at, at working its way through 84 of 873 waypoints this is the width if you wanted to in the fly modify the work width slightly or the offset in one direction or another then that's how you would do it so that's all there is to course play uh, we might let uh, this just go for a minute uh, and just so that you can see how it progresses, but uh, it's going to continue around now to where it picks up its next headland. See, it's moved in to do the, begin the second headland. If we go back to our menu while that's running... You can see we had a look before at the course manager. So this is just a folder structure. Um, the next menu that we get are some global settings for course play. Uh, generally speaking, they're your preferences. You can change them. There is some useful help tests, which gives you a pretty good idea uh, what they're about. Uh, I generally speak uh, turn off automatic repair uh, and automatic fueling. Um, and I pretty much leave all of the rest of the menus uh, as they are. The, the game friendly HUD can, uh, I like it deactivated. If it's not coming up the way it, you want, um, it kind of just depends are you using a, a a controller if you want a controller type interface then you probably want to activate uh, that and um, that's pretty much it for that menu and then the other one is the settings for each vehicle so you can change the preferences uh, for vehicles depending on what you're asking them to do uh, so sometimes it makes sense to adjust the speeds uh, a little or uh, for some types of tools, you might want to put them down a little early or, or raise them uh, a little earlier. So that's what those settings are about. The other thing which I found the other day and uh, wasn't aware that was there, if you come down to the help text, which you might not be a regular user of, um, and you'll find hidden down the bottom here a pretty handy set of help uh, information for course play itself and you can go through and select all of the the different things and uh, I was surprised at how comprehensive uh, it is uh, and how much is explained in this menu so uh, don't be afraid to jump into the help text because it's far more extensive uh, than the regular Giants help menu. And uh, that's pretty much course play. So let's just go back. 
So our uh, our worker here has finished two headlands. It's now uh, begun on the up and downs that it selected within the, the field. It's done the first one and it's going to continue those until uh, it gets to the end. Uh, so my encouragement would be if you were uh, concerned about the complexity of course play, hopefully this has given you a, uh, a starting point and a way you can get into it. Uh, working with course play on a regular field, uh, you don't need to obviously define the field because that's done for you. So you just set up a job uh, and in your menu here, in just the same way, and the difference being that you're going to pick a defined field before you go into the course generator. So I hope that was useful. Uh, give me some feedback. Let me know if it helped or if you've got any further questions uh, and uh, have fun with it. Just experiment and see what you can do. Until next time, thanks for watching. See ya.